What's up everybody, Andrew Bahone here with Tricky Jim at Full Grip Games. Who knew that giant dragons and cute little fox Pokemon could make for such an epic combination? Well, apparently the Pokemon company did because our upcoming Pokemon trading card game set, Evolving Skies, looks as if it is going to be monstrously hype. I mean, we're talking Rayquaza, VMAX, as well as each of the Evolutions with their own VMAX cards and some outstanding alternative arts as well. I'm really stoked about this upcoming set. It's due out August 27th, and I think it's going to have a huge impact on the Pokemon trading card game as we know it. In this video, I'm going to review which cards I think have the most potential, so let's check it out. Kicking off our review of Evolving Skies, we got Trevenant VMAX and Trevenant V. Trevenant has a history of being a disruptive Pokemon. Trevenant VMAX has 320 hit points and two attacks. Max Tree. Max, just Max Tree. That's what it is. Just Tree to the tree to the max does 180 damage for two grass and a colorless and missing forest does 40 damage for each supporter card in your opponent's discard pile kind of reminds me a little bit of trash lanch garbador revenant v has got 210 hit points got the absorb life attack for grass and a colorless does 30 damage and heal 30 damage from this pokemon and then shadow claw for two grass and a colorless does 120 damage and you can discard a random card from your opponent's hand not quite the disrupt nature that Trevenant and Dustnor Tag Team GX packs, I think that compared directly to other grass type Pokemon VMAX, there are just better ones to choose from. Garbodor VMAX is a card that I am very excited about. It's a 330 hit point dark type Pokemon VMAX that has an ability trash hoarding this Garbodor can wear two Pokemon tool cards. I mean, look at all this random trash and garbage just stuck to the Garbodor VMAX. I think it's such a fitting ability, right? Because you can just imagine the different tools just stuck all, all over Garbodor. There are a lot of really cool things you can do with two Pokemon tools attached, like Rugged Helmet, if you have two Rugged Helmet attached to your Garbodor VMAX, every time that Garbodor gets attacked, two energy back to the hand, you could slap two big charms on it and make your Garbodor VMAX absolutely huge. You could give it 390 hit points and its attack is not bad either for Dark and a Colorless G G Max Stink. Does 120 damage and your opponent's active Pokemon is now poisoned and can't retreat during your opponent's next turn. So good for sticking a Pokemon in the active spot. Poison can be ramped up with Toxicroak's more poison ability as well. So an interesting card for sure. Evolves from Garbodor V, who's got 210 hit points and an incredible artwork. Love the, what is this, poisonous sludge that's coming out of its fingers? I didn't really know that Garboder could, I guess, project sludge out of its finger tubes, but I guess that kind of makes sense. And then uh, it's attack garbage for a dark and a colorless, does 40 damage, your opponent's active Pokemon is now poisoned and can't retreat, so the same effect as G-Max Stink and then Sludge Bomb for two dark and a colorless does 130 damage. Looks like we are also getting a reprint of Copycat. It has seen play during some formats and not during others, like this Copycat from Celestial Storm saw almost no play. There is a nice full art version of it, but during that format wasn't really necessary. It did see a lot of play during the e-reader era and could very often draw hands of up to 10, 11, 12 cards. So Copycat was one of the best supporters back during the early days of the Pokemon TCG. Hasn't seen a lot of play lately, but it is a 
powerful card. It allows you to shuffle your hand into your deck and then draw a number of cards equal to the number of cards in your opponent's hand. Really good if hand sizes become very large in the Pokemon trading card game. Full Face Shield is a Pokemon tool card that reads the Pokemon this card is attached to except Pokemon with any abilities takes 20 less damage from your opponent's attacks. So a nice little buffer for Pokemon that don't have abilities. That means Zashian V is not going to be wearing this full face shield for any effect. Rescue Trolley is a really neat item card. Looks like one of those little backpacks with the handle that you might be pulling around the airport. Allows you to choose up to two Pokemon with 90 hit points or less from your discard pile, reel them and put them into your hand. I've definitely been missing a card like Rescue Stretcher. This kind of reminds me a little bit of Rescue Stretcher, uh, except it doesn't give you the option to recover Pokemon V or Pokemon V Max, but for single prize decks that get their low HP Pokemon knocked out quite a bit, this is going to be a huge deal. Even if we think about a deck like Whimsicott, Whimsicott has only got 90 hit points, or Weepin' Bell, Salazzle, both of those Pokemon only have 90 hit points. So if you're playing a single prize deck with Pokemon that have 90 HP or less, like Mad Party, Rescue Trolley is going to be an incredible card. Going along with the theme of having an effect on a Pokemon that doesn't have a lot of HP, Toy Catcher is a new Gust card. It's an item that allows you to choose one of your opponent's bench Pokemon that has a remaining HP of 50 or less and switch it with their active Pokemon. So it's kind of a situational Gust card. Now, Great Catcher is a situational Gust card, but it's really good because it allows you to bring Dedenne GX, Tag Team Pokemon GX, into the active position. Toy Catcher is really only good at targeting down Pokemon that don't have a lot of hit points left, and I feel like 50 HP or less is a little too situational for this card to see a lot of play. Underworld Mask, another Pokemon tool card, and it can be paired with that Garbodor VMAX that we just took a look at. It reads, when the Pokemon this card is attached to takes damage from an opponent's attack, have your opponent choose and discard one card from their hand. So Garbodor VMAX wearing two Underworld Mask cards could be discarding two cards from the opponent's hand every turn, eventually removing their hand altogether. Could be very disruptive. Continuing on with the themed tool cards from Chilling Rain, we've got Rubber Gloves and Digging Gloves. Rubber Gloves makes your Pokemon's attacks do 30 more damage to your opponent's active Lightning Pokemon and Digging Gloves makes your Pokemon's attacks do 30 more damage to your opponent's active fighting type Pokemon. I do think that these cards are very cool. They haven't really seen any play yet, but I think that as the format continues to develop and rotation happens, we could very well see some cards like Rubber Gloves and Digging Gloves seeing play, especially since if you're hitting a Pokemon for weakness, right, and I think that weakness is going to be a really big deal in the future of the Pokemon TCG, Rubber Gloves and Digging Gloves make your Pokemon do 60 more damage after weakness is taken into account. So I could definitely see these cards seeing play. Rayquaza VMAX and Rayquaza V are the poster Pokemon of Evolving Skies. Rayquaza VMAX does not disappoint. Its ability, Blue Sky Surge, reads once during a turn, you may discard your hand and draw three cards. That is a gnarly ability. It's disruptive to yourself. It's powerful, draws you cards. It's exactly the kind of ability that I would expect to see on a Rayquaza card. And its attack, Max Burst, for a fire and a lightning energy, does 20 damage. Plus, you can discard any number of fire or lightning energy attached to this Pokemon, and it does 80 more damage for each energy card that you discarded. So if you discard 
four energy cards of either fire or lightning type, you're going to do a massive 340 damage, enough damage to knock out any Pokemon VMAX in the Pokemon trading card game. If only there was a nice, reliable way to charge up our Rayquaza VMAX. So what's that? Flaffy is a 90 hit point stage one Pokemon with the ability Dynamotor. Dynamotor is a classic ability. We've seen this ability printed before on the very first electric card from Noble Victories. Electric had 90 hit points and its ability allowed it to attach a lightning energy card from the discard pile to one of your benched Pokemon. Flaffy has the same ability. Very cool to see that ability return, especially on a Flaffy card. And I think that we can all agree Flaffy is an awesome Pokemon. I don't know that there's ever been a really good Flaffy yet, so I'm really stoked to see Flaffy get some time in the limelight. Now, Flaffy also has an attack, Electric Ball, does 50 damage. Interesting. Electric Ball, 50 damage. It literally is a reprint of Electric. It has a retreat cost of two. Electric has a retreat cost of two. 90 hit points. Flaffy has 90 hit points. Now, 90 hit points is very good because it allows it to be searched out via level ball as well. So we can use Flaffy and the Dynamotor ability to charge lightning energy onto Rayquaza VMAX. Very easy to get those lightning energy into the discard pile with an ability like Blue Sky Surge. Rayquaza VMAX evolves from Rayquaza V, which has two attacks. Dragon Pulse for one lightning energy does 40 damage, and you have to discard the top two cards of your deck. And then Spiral Burst for a fire and a lightning energy does 20 damage plus you can discard either up to two fire energy or up to two lightning energy cards attached to this pokemon and it does 80 more damage for each energy card you discarded in this way so it's kind of like a max burst light where max burst has an infinite damage ceiling Spiral Burst is capped at 180 damage. Still a really nice attack for a Pokemon V. Up next, we got Duraludon VMAX, a dragon type Pokemon VMAX with 330 HP. It's a single strike Pokemon, which means that it gets all the benefits of being a single strike Pokemon. It can wear single strike scroll of scorn. It can also use single strike energy to boost its damage output. Its ability Skyscraper prevents all damage done to this Pokemon by attacks from each of your opponent's Pokemon that has special energy attached to it. So it is a tanky Pokemon. It is immune to Pokemon's attacks if they have special energy attached. There is a lot of special energy seeing play in the Pokemon trading card game right now. So that is a very useful ability. And then it's attack G-Max Pulverization does 220 damage for a fighting and to metal energy. And this attack's damage is not affected by any effects on your opponent's active Pokemon. So it goes straight through Decidueye's Deep Forest Camo ability. And we can evolve Duraludon VMAX from the metal type Duraludon V from Champion's Path, it can use Metal Saucer. So you can use Metal Saucer to charge up your Duraludon V and then evolve it into the Dragon type Duraludon VMAX. Now, there is a Dragon type Duraludon V with uh, some very interesting artwork. I have to say, this dude has got like this crazy charge beam yeah coming out of its mouth that is a uh, that's kind of funny and then uh, it's got 220 hp it's got the metal claw attack for fighting in a metal does 70 damage breaking swipe 140 damage for a fighting into metal energy i really think that the metal type duraludon v is going to be the duraludon to pair with this single strike duraludon v max 
with the return of dragon type Pokemon, there are some very cool dragon type Pokemon V in the set as well. Like Dragonite V has got 230 hit points as attack. Shred for two colorless energy does 50 damage and this attacks damage. It's not affected by any effects on your opponent's active Pokemon. Dragon Gale for two water and a lightning energy does 250 damage. And this attack does 20 damage to each of your benched Pokemon. Dragonite V is interesting. I'm not exactly sure that it's powerful enough to set it apart from any other Dragon type Pokemon, especially Rayquaza V Max, which kind of has all of the support it needs. Noivern V has the attack Boom Burst for one Psychic Energy, does 20 damage to each of your opponent's Pokemon. Nice spread attack. Reminds me of Tapu Koko Promo's Flying Flip attack, for two colorless energy, it did 20 damage to all of your opponent's Pokemon. That card saw some play in a lot of spread decks. This is a nice spread attack and could be a pain for single prize decks to deal with if you could get that damage to really add up. And then Synchro Round for a Psychic and a Darkness energy does 60 damage. Plus, if you have the same number of cards in your hand as your opponent, does 120 more damage. So maybe not the most playable card of all time, but it is worth noting that Boom Burst spreads 20 damage to each of your opponent's Pokemon for just one Psychic Energy. Zinnia's Resolution is a new supporter card. Zinnia is a Dragon-type Pokemon trainer. Very cool to see Zinnia represented in the TCG again. It reads, you can play this card only if you discard two other cards from your hand and you draw a card for each of your opponent's Pokemon in play. Just got done playing some 2004 formats just yesterday, and Steven's Advice is a very strong card in those formats. Steven's Advice allows you to draw a card for each of your opponent's Pokemon in play. Zinnia requires that you discard two other cards from your hand, so you're losing three cards, but you could draw up to six cards if your opponent has a full bench. If you're playing against an Eternatus VMAX deck or an expanded format and your opponent has a Skyfield in play, you could be drawing up to nine cards from the top of the deck. I think this card has some potential. Uh, we have seen some decks utilize Erica's Hospitality, which is kind of a similar effect. Sydney's Resolution also could allow you to get Lightning-type energy into the discard pile uh, in order to then accelerate them with Flaffy and its Dynamotor ability. Raihan is a really cool new supporter card. You can only play it if one of your Pokemon was knocked out during your opponent's last turn, it allows you to attach a basic energy from your discard pile to one of your Pokemon. If you do, you get to search your deck for any one card and put it into your hand. So this is kind of like Teammates. Teammates was a supporter card that saw a lot of play, still sees some play in expanded format. If one of your Pokemon was knocked out during your opponent's last turn, you can search your deck for any two cards and put them into your hand. Raihan is kind of like half of a Teammates, and it also accelerates energy into play. I could really see Raihan seeing play in single prize decks. Not only does it really help you to stream the energy you need in order to attack, it also gets you a key card to help you perform an attack the following turn in any supporter card that helps you to stream your attacks, especially as a single prize deck, is going to be useful. We got two new stadiums out of these sets as well. Tempest Rage reads, once during each player's turn, that player may search their deck for a basic lightning Pokemon or a basic dragon Pokemon and put it onto their bench. Tempest Range is perfect for this upcoming Rayquaza VMAX deck. You could get your Mareep, you could get your Rayquaza V, and you can do it all without having to play Quick Ball. This stadium is incredibly good. It's like a reprint of 
Brooklet Hill. Brooklet Hill saw a ton of play in water type and fighting type decks because it had the same effect but for water type or fighting type Pokemon. And I expect Tempest Rage to see a lot of play in dragon type and lightning type decks. I suspect that it'll be included in nearly all of them. And this card is going to be coming out after rotation, meaning that it won't have to compete with that troublesome chaotic swell for its spot in decks. Crystal Cave is a new stadium card as well that allows each player to heal 30 damage from all of their metal Pokemon and dragon Pokemon during their turn. Just like Tempest Range was a callback to Brooklet Hill, Crystal Cave is a callback to Rough Seas. Rough Seas allowed each player to heal 30 damage from their water Pokemon during their turn. And Crystal Cave could be useful in metal type or dragon type decks, especially if the math becomes really relevant. Rough Seas did see some play in water type decks while it was standard legal. And I think that Crystal Cave is a stadium card that metal and dragon type decks are gonna be considering. Altaria typically has powerful cards, and this Altaria is no exception. Luring Search is an ability that reads once during your turn, you may search your deck for a supporter card, reveal it, and shuffle the rest of your deck. You put the supporter card on top of your deck. You could pair this with Ranguru and its Primate Wisdom ability to essentially get whatever supporter you want into your hand every turn. Drampa, I love this Drampa. Drampa's got an attack. Jab does 30 damage, and its second attack, Berserk, for a water and a fighting energy, does 70 damage. Plus, if your bench Pokemon have any damage counters on them, this attack does 90 more damage. So 160 damage for two energy. Just need to have some damage on your benched Pokemon. And of course, this Drampa is a callback to Drampa GX which is one of my favorite Pokemon cards from Guardians Rising. Drampa GX had the Berserk attack as well for three colorless energy, did 80 damage plus 70 more damage if your bench Pokemon had any damage counters on them. And back in the day, you could pair that with Choice Band to do 180 damage and almost all the best Pokemon back in the day, you know, back in 2017, had 180 hit points. That kind of was the magic number uh, back then. But now this uh, single prize Drampa, which shares the Berserk attack, does 10 more damage and for one less energy. Just so happens that, uh, you know, 160 damage isn't going to be taking... One hit knockouts on much of anything, but it does two hit KO most Pokemon VMAX. I love Flapple and Appleton. These dudes are awesome. I feel like they're brothers or cousins or something. I mean, and they both evolve from Appleton, so they got that in common, right? Flapple's got an attack, Corrosive Fluid. For one colorless energy, this attack does 50 damage for each of your opponent's Pokemon in play. That has an ability. And then Feisty Tackle for a grass and a fire energy reads, if your opponent's active Pokemon is a Pokemon V, it does 80 plus 80 more damage. So 160 damage to Pokemon V, which is useful. Corrosive Fluid is a nice attack. Low maintenance attack. We've seen attacks like this see success in the past formats of the Pokemon trading card game, there was a Weavile that saw some play during Zorark GX's heyday. Evil Admonition did 50 damage for each of your opponent's Pokemon that has an ability. And we do kind of have a similar Pokemon to Zorark in standard format in the form of Shadow Rider VMAX, right? And Shadow Rider VMAX decks very commonly have four Pokemon in play with an ability, maybe five or even six, right? And Corrosive Fluid for one colorless energy can do upwards of 200, 200, 
and 50 damage. So Flapple is a card to keep in mind. I would really love it if they reprinted a card like Ditto Prism Star because Ditto Prism Star would allow Pokemon like Flapple to easily be splashed into just about any deck, especially since Corrosive Fluid only cost one colorless energy. Appleton has 90 hit points and its attack Gooey Fluid. So much fluid <laughs> between these dragons. Gooey Fluid uh, for one colorless energy does 70 damage times the amount of special energy cards attached to all of your opponent's Pokemon. So if your opponent has three special energy, you're going to be doing 210 damage. Four special energy, 280 damage. Five special energy, and we're one hit KOing any Pokemon. V Max, and then Feisty Tackle is the same attack as Flapple. 80 plus 80 more if the defending Pokemon is a Pokemon V. So you're going to be two hit KOing almost all Pokemon V Max with that feisty tackle attack. I think these cards are really interesting and I hope they see some play. Turtonator is definitely one of the coolest dragon type Pokemon, and I feel like Turtonator is extremely underrated. This Turtonator has 130 HP and the attack Shell Trap for a fighting and a fire energy does 30 damage and during your opponent's next turn if this pokemon is damaged by an attack even if it's knocked out you place eight damage counters on the defending pokemon i know you guys are all just here to watch me call back to every card that is being referenced from the new set right is this just incredible <laughs> is, this is why you're here is to watch me pull up the old cards and show you back in my day in 2017 shell trap cost a double colorless energy and it did 20 damage and you get to put eight damage counters on the attacking pokemon i played a turtonator gx in my top eight list from the 2017 North American International Championships just for that Shell Trap attack. Shell Trap is really cool, especially if you can use it for just one energy. We also had access to Choice Band back then, so you can make that Shell Trap do 50 base damage. And if you were attacking into a Metal-type Pokemon or a Grass-type Pokemon, you could be doing 100 base damage, so you could see how that was relevant now with an attack cost like firefighting you're probably not going to be using that shell trap very often and then heat crash for three colorless energy does 80 damage hydragon has 170 hit points and its attack dragon counter for a psychic and a darkness energy does 20 damage plus 100 more damage for each prize card your opponent has taken during their last turn. Nothing like a trap card, right? If you're playing a deck that has three prize Pokemon and one of them happens to get knocked out, then your Hydreigon could come in clutch with its dragon counter attack for 320 damage, knocking out just about any Pokemon VMAX. Now, that's a lot to kind of, you know, orchestrate things have to go just so but if you pulled it off that'd be pretty sweet and its second attack jet black fangs for a psychic a dark and two colorless energy does 210 damage it's worth noting that the hydragon from darkness ablaze will still be legal next year and it has the dark squall ability so you could pair the Dark Squall Hydreigon with this Hydreigon as this could be a pretty useful attacker in a pinch. Ludicolo is 140 hit point Pokemon. It's a stage two with the Happy Dance ability. It reads, when you play this Pokemon from your hand to evolve one of your Pokemon during your turn, you may use this ability if you do during this turn. Attacks from your basic Pokemon deal 100 more damage to your opponent's active Pokemon. If we're thinking about the strongest basic Pokemon in the TCG, who is it? I'll give you three seconds. It's Zacian V. All right, Zacian V. The only issue with Zacian V is that it can't one-hit KO Pokemon VMAX. But what if it could? 
right? Happy Dance increases your basic Pokemon's attacks by 100. If you Brave Blade for 230 damage with a Happy Dance ability, you're doing 330 damage. And then with Rusted Sword, you could be doing 360 damage, right? Uh, Ludicolo could certainly see play with Zacian V. Uh, Zacian V also draws cards naturally with its Intrepid Sword ability, which could help you to set up your Ludicolo. And of course, you can reuse this ability with Scoop Up Net. So I think this card is really good. You could even use it to power up Pokemon that aren't quite powerful enough. Imagine a Ludicolo being paired with Kecleon, right? Kecleon does 90 base damage. If you paired Kecleon with Ludicolo, you could make its base damage 190. And if you're hitting for weakness, since Kecleon could be any type, then you could one hit KO any Pokemon in the Pokemon TCG. Lotad also has a nice attack for one colorless energy. Call for family allows you to search your deck for up to two basic Pokemon and put them onto your bench. Call for family type attacks are extremely good with stage two Pokemon since a lot of times one of the most difficult parts about getting a stage two Pokemon into play is finding those basic Pokemon early on. Lucky Popsicle is a new item card that reads heal 20 damage from your active Pokemon, then flip a coin. If heads, you can put this card back into your hand instead of the discard pile. So if you're feeling lucky and you flip like five heads in a row, you can heal 100 damage from your active Pokemon. In fact, if you flip like 10 heads in a row, you could heal 200 damage. You're probably not flipping 10 heads in a row, but if you did, it would be busted. Cryogonal has 90 hit points and its attack elemental chains. For one water energy, allows you to look at the top six cards of your deck, choose any number of basic energy you find there and attach them to your Pokemon in any way you like, then shuffle the other cards back into your deck. I think this Cryogonal it's actually really cool, and you could pair it with Ice Rider Calrex VMAX just to kind of get the party started. You can start Cryogonal on the first turn of the game, start using Elemental Chains. It's kind of like a Max Elixir, except Max Elixir could only attach one energy. Elemental Chains allows you to attach as many basic energy as you find in the top six cards of your deck and attach them to your Pokemon in any way you like. So if you happen to find six energy, highly unlikely, but I mean, I guess if you got a lot of energy in your deck, you could very easily find a few. You could attach them to a more powerful Pokemon like your Ice Rider and be off to a great start. You can also guarantee an energy acceleration if you pair Cryogonal with Primate Wisdom Orangaroo. You can place an energy onto the top of your deck and then accelerate it with Cryogonal, which is a pretty cool combo. Gourgeist, Pumpkaboo. I've got a Pumpkaboo tattoo on my ankle. Pumpkaboo is one of my favorite ghost type Pokemon. And you know what? Gourgeist doesn't get enough love. Gorgeist is a stage one Pokemon with 120 HP and its attack Pandemonium for two colorless energy allows to reveal the top six cards of your deck and this attack does 60 damage for each psychic Pokemon revealed in this way. Then you shuffle the psychic Pokemon you revealed back into your deck and discard the other cards. This sounds like it's got silly deck written all over it. Amazing. You all remember the Chandelure deck, right? Played like 30 some Pokemon in it, maybe 40 Pokemon. There were so many Pokemon in the Chandelure deck. As you play the game, you are going to be kind of increasing the amount of psychic type Pokemon or increasing the ratio of psychic type Pokemon to non psychic type Pokemon in your deck, increasing the odds that you will hit a massive pandemonium attack for 300 or even 360 damage. The cool thing about Gorgeist is that it evolves from Pumpkaboo, which has a really nifty ability, Pumpkin Pit 
reads, when you play this Pokemon from your hand onto your bench during your turn, you may discard a stadium card in play. Now, this resetting whole Marshadow is one of the most popular cards in our current standard format for its resetting whole ability. Now, of course, resetting whole is a stronger ability as you can just play the Marshadow down onto your bench and then use resetting whole whenever you deem fit. Pumpkaboo, you have to play from your hand at the time you want to discard a stadium card in play. Now, Unbroken Bond's Marshadow is rotating out of standard format in September. So Pumpkaboo will be a nice replacement. And I could see this card seeing play in decks, even if they aren't playing a Gorgeist deck. Yo, we got a red solo cup? It's an item card that allows you to switch a card from your hand with the top card of your deck. So you could play the solo cups with that Altaria that we took a look at Earlier, Altaria allows you to put any supporter you want on top of your deck, and then you could solo cup to get that card into your hand. Kind of an interesting card. I don't really expect it to see a lot of play, but it could see play in combination with specific cards like Altaria. This Hollow Rare Victini is a great setup card for two colorless energy. Its attack, Victory Dive, does 30 damage, and you may search your deck for any two cards and put them into your hand. Then you shuffle your deck, then your opponent plays Marnie, then you put those cards on the bottom of your deck and get four cards off the top. Suicune V has got the ability Swift Runner, which reads once during your turn, if this Pokemon is in the active spot, you may draw a card, and then its attack, Blizzard Rondo for a water and a colorless energy does 20 damage plus 20 more damage for each bench Pokemon in play, both yours and your opponent. So if there are 10 bench Pokemon in play, means that Blizzard Rondo will do 220 damage for just two energy. And then Suicune V has got that nice little built-in consistency in Swift Runner, drawing it a card every turn. Hollow Rare Kiram has got 120 hit points in its attack. Extreme Freeze, kind of like a brain freeze. If you sip at your Slurpee too fast, you may find yourself discarding any number of water energy attached to your Pokemon in play. This attack does 60 damage for each energy card discarded in this way. So if you discard six energy from your board, you can do 360 damage. This Kiram kind of reminds me of the Turtonator that saw some play as a single prize attacker in fire type decks. Explosive Jet had a multiplier of 50 and you could discard any amount of fire energy from your Pokemon in play. Turtonator was really good because it allowed you to one hit KO big tag team Pokemon GX, could even KO Pokemon VMAX even though there was no overlap between Turtonator and Pokemon VMAX. If this card was legal in today's standard format, you can bet that a lot of Welder decks will be finding room for Turtonator. So this Kiram definitely reminds me of the Turtonator. Its attack cost is a little bit more difficult to obtain, but it is a powerful attack nonetheless, and definitely something to keep in mind. New Lycanroc cards, you know I love Lycanroc. Lycanroc GX was one of the strongest fighting type Pokemon printed in recent memory. Lycanroc VMAX has 320 hit points and its attack Hunting Claw for one fighting energy allows you to choose one of your opponent's Pokemon with 60 hit points or less remaining. And that Pokemon is now knocked out. So, wow, it just automatically chases down any Pokemon in play that uh, has 60 or less HP and, and knocks it out. That's kind of interesting. It gets around any kind of bench barrier ability because it's technically an effect of an attack. It doesn't just do 60 damage to one of your opponent's Pokemon. It knocks out a Pokemon that has 60 hit points or less. Meaning that a card like 
the big parasol would uh, make it so that this attack did not affect the bench Pokemon. Now, I do think that this attack would be way better if it did just deal 60 damage to one of your opponent's Pokemon because it would allow you to set up knockouts, right? Uh, Hunting Claw is kind of just useless if there are no Pokemon on your opponent's side of the field with 60 hit points or less. And then Lycanroc VMAX's attack, Max Edge for two fighting in a colorless does 190 damage. And this attack does 30 damage to one of your opponent's benched Pokemon. A nice little spread attack. It is a little bit expensive for a fighting type attack, but 190 with 30 spread is pretty decent damage output. And then Lycanroc V has 200 hit points. The attack Rock Throw is a nice little punch. One fighting energy for 40, and then Crushing Fangs for two fighting and a colorless does 200 damage, and this Pokemon can't attack during your next turn. Gyarados is an absolute monster. This dude's got 330 hit points, and the attack Hyper Beam for two water and a colorless energy does 120 damage, and you can discard an energy from your opponent's active Pokemon. Guaranteed energy denial is very good, especially if you're setting up for a two-hit KO, Hyper Beam does 120 damage, perfect for setting up Max Tyrant for the knockout, which does 240 damage for three water and a colorless, most notably knocking out any Pokemon V that you might encounter. Gyarados V has got 220 hit points and its attack Rage Out. You ever just flip the table, Rage Out, Command, Quit, Pokemon trading card game online. I feel like this is relatable content. Rage Out for two water and a colorless does 20 damage for each damage counter on this Pokemon. What is that memory thing? You could pair Gyarados VMAX with Memory Capsule. And you could use that Rage Out attack for huge one-hit KOs. If your opponent hits into Gyarados VMAX for 160 damage with Memory Capsule, you can easily strike back for a whopping 320 damage in return for just two water and a colorless. And since Pokemon VMAX are pretty tough to knock out, and if you're trying to two-hit KO a Pokemon VMAX, you're going to want to do somewhere in the ballpark of 160 to 200 damage, I certainly think that Memory Capsule could be a neat combo with Gyarados V and Gyarados V Max. And then Gyarados V also has a nice vanilla attack, Heavy Storm for three water and a colorless, does 180 damage. Volcarona V is really good. It's got 210 hit points and its attack Surging Fire for one fire energy does 20 damage plus 20 more damage for each basic energy card in your discard pile. And after showing these cards to your opponent, you shuffle them back into your deck. This is kind of a reprint or a rehash of Victini Prism Star, right? And it's Infinity Attack. Victini Prism Star was played in almost all fire decks while it was legal. And Victini Prism Star was a card you could only play one of in your deck. Volcarona V can be included as much as you would like, and its attack only costs one fire energy. So not only does Volcarona V have huge damage potential if you have 15 fire energy in your discard pile surging fire is going to be doing 320 damage for just one fire energy it also recovers your fire energy back to the deck which is very good considering that cards like fire crystal are going to be rotating in september Single Strike Golurk V has got 220 hit points and two attacks, Mega Punch for Psychic and two Colorless does 80 damage. And then Rewind Beam for two Psychic and two Colorless energy does 180 damage if your opponent's active Pokemon is an evolved Pokemon, devolve it by putting the highest stage evolution card 
on it into your opponent's hand. So 180 damage. And if you're like me, you read this card and then the gears start turning in your head and you're like, okay, most Pokemon V Max, right? Uh, they evolve from Pokemon V that have about 220 hit points. So uh, Rewind Beam is about 40 damage short of taking the knockout instantly on Pokemon V when you devolve the VMAX, so you would have to pair Go Lurk V with a card like Houndoom, but two Psychic Energy is a little bit tough, but the potential is there to take big knockouts on Pokemon VMAX, turning them into Pokemon V, and one-hit KOing them with Rewind Beam. Metacham V is a rapid strike Pokemon with the attack Yoga Loop. For two colorless energy, you put two damage counters on one of your opponent's Pokemon. If any of your opponent's Pokemon was knocked out by this attack, take another turn after this one. You can't use this attack if any of your Pokemon used Yoga Loop during your last turn. So you have the option to take two turns. That is a powerful attack you can't stream it over and over again but the option to just take a whole other turn is definitely something worth thinking about now it is a rapid strike pokemon meaning you could use yoga loop for just one rapid strike energy and rapid strike pokemon have been known to spread damage like Rapid Strike Inteleon with its quick shooting ability allows you to kind of map out your damage and take knockouts precisely when you want to. Rapid Strike Urshifu VMAX also has its GMAX Rapid Flow attack, which does 120 damage to two of your opponent's Pokemon. So I think that Metacham V could be a card that sees play as maybe a one of in Rapid Strike decks. I also think that Metacham V would be very cool in single prize decks, right? Because a lot of times single prize decks are kind of coming from behind. And especially if you're playing a single prize deck that maybe relies on Rapid Strike Inteleon, you could make a big comeback play with a Yoga Loop, right, for knockout, take another turn, then Sky Uppercut, a Crobat V on the bench, and it's GG's, right? So you just have this option to take three prizes before your opponent gets to take a turn, especially since Sky Uppercut can one-hit KO Crobat V. And if you're playing a single prize deck, right, you don't have to have liabilities in play. You can kind of slow down the pace of the game and really take your time kind of setting up the knockouts and then come in with Metacham V at the end of the game and uh, kind of sweep things up. Now, maybe that's a little bit of a wombo combo. Yeah, you know, probably is, but uh, the potential is there, and I think that it's a really cool card nonetheless. The Jump Luff line looks like it has been inducted into the Rapid Strike Club. It's got 90 hit points. Jump Luff have always had 90 HP. Let's just take a look at all of the Jump Luff that exists i mean pokemon let's 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 talk about this okay pokemon in the modern era have 340 320 hit points but jump love has very consistently had 90 hp i mean i'm talking this jump love from 2004 had 90 hp jump love has historically either had 70 or 90 HP, that's it. No other number has been printed on a Jump Luff card, and now we're getting another 90 hit point Jump Luff. But that does make it level ball searchable, which is kind of cool. But I'm just saying, all stage two Pokemon, just 190. They should all have 100 more hit points. Every single stage two Pokemon should have 100 more hit points. If I had to evolve this dude, it should have nearly 200 hit points. Just period. That's it. End the rant. 
Cotton Combo is an ability that reads this Pokemon can attack twice per turn. Let's go! If your opponent's active Pokemon was knocked out by the first attack, they choose their new active Pokemon before the second attack. And for one grass, energy spinning attack does 60 damage. We've seen this kind of thing before. Metacham has the Omega Barrage trait, which allowed it to attack twice. And even though its attacks aren't very powerful, you can really boost those in a lot of ways, especially in expanded formats. Bunnelby from Primal Clash also has that Omega Barrage trait, allowing it to attack twice. So really cool to see that kind of trait be rehashed in the form of an ability. Spinning attack does only do 60 damage, and grass type weakness isn't a huge weakness right now. Metacham had the benefit of being a fighting type Pokemon, and fighting type weakness is a great weakness to hit for. Grass type, not so much. Single strike Wobbuffet doesn't really strike me as a Single strike Pokemon doesn't really strike me as the kind of Pokemon that does much attacking at all, but that's fine. It's got the attack Mirror Pain for two colorless energy. Choose one of your bench Pokemon and put as many damage counters on the defending Pokemon as there are on the Pokemon you choose. That is a really interesting attack. I'm, I'm not going to lie. That's That's really cool because you can use it with twin energy or you could accelerate to it with single strike energy uh, or single strike roar on Hound Doom. And basically, if you have a Pokemon VMAX in play that has taken some serious damage, right, then you can use Mirror Pain to strike back, in a sense, with a single prize Pokemon. I think that that's really interesting. Single Strike Scroll of Fangs is a Single Strike tool card that grants the Single Strike Pokemon it's attached to this monstrosity of an attack for a fighting two metal and two colorless energy. Shred Off does 300 damage, and you have to discard all energy from this Pokemon. So five energy, 300 damage. I mean, it is a wild attack. Just think, you could put this single strike scroll of fangs on any Pokemon. You could put it on a single prize Pokemon. And then all of a sudden, you've got a single prize Pokemon that can do 320, 340 damage, which is interesting, right? Like, yes, it cost five energy. Yes, you have to discard all of the energy attached to it. But with single strike energy boosting your damage output and uh, the ability to one hit KO Pokemon VMAX, it's interesting. Should an attack that does 300 damage not be super easy to use? Of course it shouldn't be super easy to use, but it's there. And I hope I see this card played somewhere in the future because it seems like a lot of fun. Scroll of Wyverns is a tool card that grants your Rapid Strike Pokemon this bonus attack. Meteor for a Fire and a Lightning. You discard two energy from this Pokemon. This attack does 90 damage to one of your opponent's Pokemon. So 90 damage spread, pretty good. Uh, Fire and a Lightning, it could be paired with Rapid Strike, Rayquaza, VMAX, but I suspect in... Rapid Strike, Rayquaza VMAX, you're probably going to want to just one-hit KO whatever is in the active position, but it is a really good attack. I mean, 90 damage spread is great against single prize decks, and I could definitely see Rapid Strike, Scroll of Wyverns, seeing some play in uh, Rayquaza VMAX decks. Oh, I love him! There's also a Wishy Washy. Wishy Washy has the ability School Power. If this Pokemon has at least three Water Energy attached to it, it gets plus 150 hit points. Okay, that's a big Wishy Washy. 180 HP, and then its attack Swarm Blast for two Colorless Energy does 30 damage, plus 30 more damage for each Basic Energy attached to this Pokemon. So you're telling me that this Wishy Washy 
could one hit KO any Pokemon in the Pokemon trading card game. And it's a basic Pokemon that can have 180 hit points. That's kind of cool, right? You could just play a wishy washy Frost Moth deck, right? And you could just load up a ton of energy onto your wishy washy with Frost Moth and just go to town. I think that this is a really cool card and it could be a nice single prize deck. Zygarde now comes in rapid strike form. This dude's got 130 hit points, knows how to take a bite. And it's got the attack Verdict Maelstrom for a grass, a fighting, and a colorless. Not the easiest attack cost to fulfill, but the effect is powerful. You can choose one of your opponent's Pokemon, and this attack does 40 damage to that Pokemon for each prize card your opponent has already taken. So if your opponent has taken five prizes, you're going to be doing 200 damage to one of your opponent's Pokemon, even if it's on the bench. So that's pretty neat. There are new Galarian birds. They all have some variation of this same ability. Galarian Moltres has Evil Charge, which reads once during your turn when you play this Pokemon from your hand onto your bench, you may attach up to two Darkness Energy from your hand to this Pokemon. I think this ability is very good. Any ability on a basic Pokemon that allows you to accelerate energy into play is going to be a powerful option. You can even reuse it with Scoop Up Net if you have some way to move the energy off of Galarian Moltres with Energy Switch or something like that or in expanded format since we're not going to have the option to use Weavile GX alongside Galarian Moltres for too long, if at all, because of rotation. But even in expanded format, you could use Evil Charge with Weavile GX, move the energy elsewhere, right? And uh, then rinse, wash, and repeat. But you could also just attack with your Galarian Moltres. It's got the attack Fiery Wrath for two dark and a colorless energy. Does 20 damage plus 50 more damage for each prize card your opponent has already taken. So if they've taken five prizes, then Fiery Wrath is going to be doing 270 damage. Reggie Lecky. I think Reggie Lecky might just be my favorite Reggie. I love this dude. Now, apparently, Reggie Lecky is like the fastest Pokemon in the game. I think I saw this on Twitter somewhere. And this dude's got a retreat cost of two. So I kind of got, I kind of got issue with that. Why has this dude got a retreat cost of two if he's so fast and electrifying? I don't know. Only the card designers do. It's got 120 HP and awesome artwork and two attacks, Static Shock for one colorless energy, does 20 damage, and then Mega Spark for two lightning and a colorless energy, does 120 damage. You do have to discard all your energy, but this attack also does 40 damage to two of your opponent's benched Pokemon. Paired with Telescopic Sight, you're gonna be doing 70 damage to two of your opponent's benched Pokemon. V or Pokemon V Max, and you could charge up your Reggie Lecky with the new Flaffy that's going to be coming out in Evolving Skies. Nine Tails is usually game for some pretty cool abilities and such. This Nine Tails has the ability Nine Secret Path. The retreat cost of your Pokemon with fire energy attached becomes two less. That is a nice little ability instead of playing a bunch of air balloon in your fire type deck you could just play a nine tails line and then all of a sudden all your fire dudes got free retreats and eh, not free retreat but less less retreat the best galarian bird ever created galarian zapdos is the best one you know galarian zapdos we got galarian zapdos on our youtube banner i got a galarian zapdos right here in the studio because he's just that awesome it's got the ability feet charge once during your turn when you play this pokemon from your hand to your bench you may attach up to two fighting energy from your hand to this pokemon and then it's got the attack flash kick for two fighting and a colorless energy you may discard all energy from this pokemon if you do your opponent's active pokemon is now paralyzed so a nice little 
automatic paralysis automatic paralysis obviously very good you can use that attack out of nowhere with the feet charge ability and i think that the galarian zapdos might be the most impactful of all of these single prize galarian birds and you can move all of the energy off of galarian zapdos with your boy galarian surfetched v who has the resolute spear ability which allows you to move any of your fighting energy from play onto your galarian surfetched when it moves from the bench to the active spot allowing you to easily fire off quick meteor smash attack so that's a pretty nifty combo i do think the galarian zapdos is going to be the best one of these single prize birds but you know that i am definitely biased figures they waited until dragon pokemon returned to give the pure dragon type pokemon reggie drago a dragon type card reggie drago has 130 HP and two attacks. I see one of them does 240 damage. First attack, Hammer In does 30 Dragon Energy for two Grass, and a Fire does 240 damage and 20 less damage for each damage counter on this Pokemon. So if you've got a fresh Reggie Drago, you can do 240 damage. Pretty good. We've seen these kinds of attacks see play. Violet Plume GX's massive bloom attack sees a lot of play in Mewtwo and Mew Tag Team GX Dex does 180 damage minus 10 for each damage counter on it. Uh, this Reggie Drago could be useful in a deck that can power up this attack. Like Cherim. This is a fancy Thievul. Now, where do you think? Thievil got all of these treats. Do you think that Thievil went to the Pokemart and bought them with cash? Do you think that Thievil is simply borrowing these from a friend? Or did Thievil steal them? My bet's on steal them. Thievil has the ability Hand Fumble, reads once during your turn when you play this card from your hand to evolve one of your Pokemon, you may use this ability, okay. Each player shuffles their hand and puts it at the bottom of their deck, then draws four cards. Let's go! This is awesome. Y'all remember Let Loose Marshadow. Let Loose Marshadow was released in 2017. Now, let Loose Marshadow didn't actually start seeing play until about 2018. It was legal for a while and nobody played it, if you can believe it. This card was legal for quite some time before anybody realized that it was absolutely broken. The format really came to a point where decks were just using Let Loose on the first turn of the game to disrupt the opponent to draw more cards, and then they were using it at the end of the game to disrupt the opponent and try to keep them from having the game-winning cards that they needed. Now, what was so broken about Marshadow is that the ability was on a basic Pokemon that could easily be searched out, and this card is so busted that it got banned from expanded format, but not until my buddy JW was able to win a regional championship with our Voloplume and uh, Rowlet and Alolan Executor deck that did feature a Let Loose Marshadow, and I got to enjoy that card in that deck as well, finishing in the top 16 myself. So some very fond memories of Let Loose Marshadow. Thievil has this ability on a stage one, which does make it a lot more balanced. It is a hand disruption ability that also can refresh your own hand. It's on a stage one, so you can't use it on the first turn of the game going first or the first turn of the game at all, which of course is very significant. And uh, yeah, it's got an attack, which does 60 damage, but you're probably never gonna use it for that attack if you use it at all. Galarian Articuno 
quite a majestic Pokemon also has that ability, Cold Charge. Once during your turn, when you play this Pokemon from your hand onto your bench, you may attach up to two Psychic Energy from your hand to this Pokemon. Of course, Shadow Rider Calyrex VMAX comes to mind, but when you really think about a Shadow Rider Calyrex VMAX deck, right? Uh, of course, the Galarian Articuno will allow you to accelerate more energy into play to pump up Galarian, uh, to pump up Shadow Rider Calyrex VMAX's attack. But do you really find yourself with extra bench space and extra psychic energy in your hand when you're playing Shadow Rider Calyrex VMAX? A lot of times you would rather use that psychic energy to draw cards from the deck with the Underworld Door ability. Now, Galarian Articuno is a nice little attacker in its own right though, for two Psychic and a Colorless Spiritual Laser. Discards all energy cards attached to this Pokemon. It does 120 damage to one of your opponent's Pokemon. So a nice little spread option for Psychic type decks. You could play uh, this Galarian Articuno as a spread attacker in your Shadow Rider Calyrex VMAX deck. And doing 120 damage to one of your opponent's Pokemon is nice. Kind of combos with Shadow Rider V's attack, which allows you to place five damage counters on two of your opponent's Pokemon. I do think that Galarian Articuno will end up being a card that doesn't see a ton of play in Shadow Rider decks, maybe just a one of, uh, but I don't think that it's quite as impactful as the other two. Salamence has 170 hit points and the ability Intimidating Roar, which reads once during your turn, you may have the opponent switch their active Pokemon with one of their benched Pokemon. And then Savage Dragon for a fire and a water energy does 100 damage. And if your opponent's active Pokemon already has any damage counters on it, so the deck does 120 more damage. So 220 damage potential for just two energy and the ability to push your opponent's active Pokemon out of the way is a nifty little attack in expanded format. You could use this attack for just one double dragon energy, but, uh, you know, expanded format, it's really tough to get a stage two Pokemon in to play. You could also power this Salamence up with the new supporter, Raihan, right, could be a perfect combo with Raihan, since Raihan accelerates a basic energy from your discard pile to one of your Pokemon if one of your Pokemon got knocked out. So I do think that I'm going to have to start getting used to thinking of single prize Pokemon in the context of having Raihan as an available resource. What's your favorite evolution? Evolving Skies is going to have every evolution and its respective VMAX card in it from Japan's EV Hero set, which is really exciting. Vaporeon is an awesome Pokemon. I'm really stoked about this Vaporeon VMAX card. Vaporeon V has got two attacks. Triple draw for one colorless energy allows you to draw three cards, and then Splash Jump for two water and a colorless energy does 90 damage, and you can switch this Pokemon with one of your benched Pokemon. And then Vaporeon VMAX has two attacks. Its first attack, Water Pod, is very exciting. For one colorless energy, you can put one water Pokemon from your discard pile onto your bench, which is amazing in of itself because it does not specify basic Pokemon. So you can just put a stage two water Pokemon or a water Pokemon VMAX from the discard pile straight to the bench. But wait, there's more. Then you can attach up to three water energy from your discard pile to that Pokemon. So Water Pod is fantastic at setting up your board, accelerating water energy into play, and with the new tool card, Elemental Badge, you can use that Water Pod attack for free. Elemental Badge makes it so that each of your Vaporeon, Jolteon, and Flareon's attacks cost one colorless less. So we got to look at these evolutions in the context of Elemental Badge. This is a fantastic setup attack. 
And then Max Rapids for a water and two colorless energy does 100 damage. And if your opponent's active Pokemon already has damage counters on it, this attack does 100 more damage. And with Elemental Badge, you can use that attack for just one Rapid Strike energy. So a very low maintenance Pokemon. I really love this Rapid Strike Vaporeon VMAX, and I think it's going to be a fantastic card for setting up your water type decks. My favorite evolution is probably Jolteon. I love lightning type Pokemon. Jolteon V and Jolteon V Max are awesome. Jolteon V has a first attack, Jolt Arrow, for one colorless energy. Does 20 damage to one of your opponent's Pokemon with the elemental badge. Can be used for free. And then for a lightning and two colorless energy, Pin Missile, flip four coins. 60 damage times the number of heads. Probably not going to be using Pin Missile too much, but Jolt Arrow, a nice attack for starting off the game. And I guess, you know, are you going to be using Elemental Badge with this, or are you going to be using Telescopic Sight? Telescopic Sight does increase the damage you deal to your opponent's bench Pokemon V, but Elemental Badge makes it so you can use these attacks for one colorless less, which seems better because Jolteon VMAX has an attack max Thunderclap for a lightning and a colorless energy does 100 damage and then 100 damage to one of your opponent's benched Pokemon that has any damage counters on it. And of course, you could pair this with Galarian Zigzagoon. You could pair it with Urshifu VMAX. There's a bunch of cards that deal damage to the opponent's bench that uh, you could use Jolteon VMAX with. And since you can attach Elemental Badge to this and make that attack only cost one Lightning Energy. That is a pretty serious attack. 200 damage uh, spread on your opponent's board for just one Energy is pretty insane. So I'm definitely looking forward to playing around with Jolteon VMAX. It's also got Free Retreat, and Free Retreat is just incredible on a Pokemon VMAX. I don't know that there are many, if any at all, Pokemon VMAX that have free retreats, so definitely going to love that about Jolteon V and Jolteon V Max. Flareon V and Flareon V Max are new single strike Pokemon from our upcoming set, Evolving Skies. Single strike means that they have access to single strike energy and all of the support cards that benefit single strike Pokemon. And of course, that new elemental badge card that is gonna be coming out in Evolving Skies. Flareon V has an incredible alt art as well. If you haven't seen it, it is phenomenal. I think probably the prettiest alt art card from the upcoming set. I know better than Rayquaza. I'm a little biased, okay? I think that the uh, Flareon card is just super, super sick. It's got two attacks. Flareon V's Burning Breath for one colorless energy does 20 damage, and you get to search your deck for a fire energy and attach it to this Pokemon. So nice for accelerating energy into play. And then Scorching Column for two fire and a colorless does 120 damage, and your opponent's active Pokemon is now burned. So essentially 140 damage, and you can increase that with single strike energy. Flareon V Max has a nice 320 HP with the max. Eruption attack for a fire and two colorless energy. You discard the top five cards of your deck. And this attack does 100 damage for each energy card you discarded in this way. So if you discard five energy, you're going to be doing 500 damage. That is, oh, that's a lot of damage. But uh, even if you discard three energy, three out of five, I mean, that's not that much to ask for, you're going to be doing 300 damage. And of course, you can uh, boost Flareon VMAX's damage output with single strike energy, and you can refill your deck with energy with cards like Energy Recycler. I think this card is going to be a lot of fun to play. Kind of reminds me of the Chandelure deck that we built on stream, which did 60 damage times the amount of Pokemon you discarded off the top of your deck. I certainly think that Flareon VMAX is going to be a very fun card to play. Espeon V and Espeon VMAX are extremely useful Pokemon because of Espeon VMAX's Solar Revelation ability, which prevents all effects of your opponent's attacks except damage done to each of your Pokemon that has any energy attached to it. This seems familiar. Oh, what's this? Dark Explorers 2012? 
an Espeon with a Solar Revelation ability, which also prevents all effects of your opponent's attacks, except damage done to each of your Pokemon that has any energy attached to it. We are getting a reprint of that ability uh, like nine years later on a 310 hit point Pokemon VMAX, which is pretty neat. These guys also have some attacks, so let's look at them. Mind Shot for one Psychic Energy does 60 damage to one of your opponent's Pokemon V, nice little spread attack there. If you were to put a telescopic sight on it, 90 damage to a Pokemon V, not bad for one psychic energy. And then extra sensory for a psychic and two colorless does 120 damage. And Espeon VMAX has the attack Max Psy for a psychic and two colorless energy. This attack does 60 damage for each energy attached to all of your opponent's Pokemon in play. Espeon VMAX also has access to this new tool, Moon and Sun Badge, that reads, whenever your opponent plays a supporter card from their hand, prevent all effects of that card done to the Pokemon this card is attached to if it has Espeon V or Umbreon V in its name. Effectively, this means that your Espeon VMAX and Espeon V won't be able to be targeted with boss's orders or Flannery or cards like that, which is situationally useful. It could allow you to build up your Espeon VMAX on your bench without having to worry about it getting bossed up. So that's kind of nice. Not the most useful card in the world, I don't think, but it could be used in a very specific kind of deck. Single Strike Umbreon and Single Strike Umbreon VMAX are some of the cards that I am most excited about from our upcoming set, Evolving Skies. I was lucky enough to pull the awesome alt art Umbreon V out of my EV Heroes box, so really a big fan of that card. Umbreon V has two, Umbreon v has two attacks. Mean Look for one Darkness Energy does 30 damage, and the defending Pokemon can't retreat during your opponent's next turn. And then Moonlight Blade for a Dark and two Colorless Energy does 80 damage, and if this Pokemon has any damage counters on it, does 80 more damage. So 160 base damage if your Umbreon V has any damage counters on it, and we know that it is going to be very easy to get damage counters on your Umbreon V, thanks to Houndoom with the Single Strike Roar ability, which not only accelerates single strike energy to your Umbreon V, but also places damage counters on it. So some nice synergy there. And then Umbreon VMAX. I do think that this is going to be one of, if not the best card out of Evolving Skies. It has 310 hit points and its ability, Dark Signal, allows you to gust up one of your opponent's bench Pokemon when you evolve your Umbreon V into Umbreon VMAX. So a gust, guaranteed gust, that you don't need to play a supporter or an item for, that is very powerful, especially since you can play search cards to get your Umbreon VMAX, essentially turn a card like Evolution Incense into a automatic gust, so long as there is and Umbreon in play. Very, very strong effect, and I think that this card is going to potentially be its own deck since it can attack, and it's definitely going to be in Dark-type decks. Could also find its way into decks that don't ever plan on attacking with Umbreon VMAX just because that ability is so strong. Its attack, Max Darkness, for a dark and two colorless energy, does 160 damage. Of course, you can boost that with single strike energy. 160 is the magic number when it comes to Pokemon VMAX because it two hit KOs almost all Pokemon VMAX. And then, of course, with single strike energy, you will be two hit KOing all Pokemon VMAX, and Umbreon VMAX is arguably one of the best cards for to hit KO in Pokemon VMAX because it can chase them down with Dark Signal. I'm really excited to see how Umbreon V and Umbreon VMAX affect our upcoming Sword and Shield on format. Leafeon V has an awesome ability, Greening Cells, which reads, once per turn, you may search your deck for a Grass Energy and attach it to one of your Pokemon. That would be broken, but it does end your turn, unfortunately. So, I could imagine this ability 
being used to help build your board position. It's obviously very good on the first turn of the game going first since you can't attack anyways. So a fantastic ability for getting your grass deck set up. I can imagine this ability being very good in kind of a big tanky VMAX deck where your Pokemon aren't going to be getting knocked out. And then it's attack Leaf Blade for a grass and two colorless energy does 90 damage and you can flip a coin if hence this attack does 60 more damage. Leafy on VMAX has 310 hit points and two attacks. It's first attack Grass Knot for a grass and a colorless energy does 60 damage for each energy in your opponent's active Pokemon's retreat cost, which is pretty cool, right? Because it can ramp up with the effect of stadiums like Galar Mine, which increases the defending Pokemon's retreat cost by two. So that's an additional 120 damage. And if the defending Pokemon has a base retreat cost of two, and then you have a Galar Mine in play, you're gonna be doing 240 damage for just two energy, and that's pretty good. If the defending Pokemon has a base retreat cost of three, then you're going to be doing 300 damage with a Galar Mine in play. So I think this attack is not bad, and if they print another Pokemon kind of like Absol that increases the defending Pokemon's retreat cost, we could see Grass Knot hit some very big numbers for just two energy. And then Leafeon's second attack, Max Leaf, for two grass and a colorless energy does 170 damage and you heal 30 damage from this Pokemon. I do like that Leafy on VMAX has access to this max leaf attack. Not only does it allow Leafeon to tank hits because it heals 30 damage, but it also allows Leafeon VMAX to hit some nice numbers if the defending Pokemon doesn't happen to have a hefty retreat cost. So a very cool Pokemon. And I think that Leafeon V being able to accelerate energy into play is going to be very good for this Leafeon VMAX. Another cool thing about Leafeon VMAX is that it also has access to this frozen leaf badge Pokemon tool, which makes it so that it has no retreat cost and no weakness. So we talked about how Leafeon VMAX could be good as a tanky archetype, and I think that this frozen leaf badge really plays into that idea well. You know what? Some people really like to play decks where their Pokemon take no damage. Glaceon VMAX may very well be the evolution for you if this is uh, your kind of style of play. Its ability, Crystal Veil, prevents all damage done to this Pokemon by attacks from your opponent's Pokemon VMAX, except for Glaceon VMAX. So the only VMAX Pokemon that can damage Glaceon VMAX is other Glaceon VMAX. So that is, uh, th that's pretty fun. And Glaceon V has an awesome attack as well to help you set your Glaceon VMAX up. Ice Ascension allows you to search your deck for a card that evolves from this Pokemon and put it onto this Pokemon to evolve it. You can use that the first turn of the game going second. And Glaceon V also has an attack Whiteout for a water and two colorless energy does 120 damage and you can discard any stadium card in play. Could be good for getting those pesky path to the peak stadiums out of play since Glaceon VMAX does have a nice ability that you won't want to have turned off. And then Glaceon VMAX's attack, Max Icicle, for water and two colorless energy, does 150 damage and 30 damage to one of your opponent's benched Pokemon. Glaceon VMAX also has access to Frozen Leaf Badge, which gives it a zero retreat cost and no metal weakness, which is fantastic since we all know that Zacian V is a very powerful card. Unfortunately, I do think that Crystal Veil is a little bit of a weak ability nowadays. It can be turned off with Path to the Peak. I think that Zamazenta V 
might just be the better choice as far as wall Pokemon go in our upcoming formats, or even one better, Decidueye with its deep forest camo ability or Altaria. I think if you're going to play a wall type deck, those Pokemon without rule boxes seem like the way to go since they are not affected by Path to the Beak. Sylveon V and Sylveon V Max are new Rapid Strike Pokemon from Evolving Skies, and they have access to the new Ribbon Badge Pokemon tool. That makes it so that your Sylveon gives up one fewer prize card when it's knocked out. So that is super cool. It doesn't affect its hit points or anything like that, like some of the other cards we've seen that make your Pokemon V Max and Pokemon GX give up less prizes. So your Sylveon V and Sylveon V Max just give up less prizes than other Pokemon V and other Pokemon V Max, which is really good if you have that ribbon badge attached. Sylveon V has an ability Dream Gift, which reads once during your turn, you may search your deck for one item card and put it into your hand, then shuffle your deck. If you use this ability, your turn ends. Now that ability sounds great for setting your deck up, but Marnie is one of the most popular supporter cards in the game right now. So I fear that if you're using Dream Gift to set up your hand, it's probably just going to be Marnied to the bottom of the deck. And then Magical Shot for two colorless energy does 60 damage. Not a great attack, but since Sylveon is a Rapid Strike Pokemon, you could use it for just one Rapid Strike energy. Now, Sylveon VMAX has 310 hit points. Nice, respectable amount of HP and two attacks. Its first attack, Cherish Touch. For one Psychic Energy, you get to attach an energy from your hand to one of your bench Pokemon, then heal 120 damage from that Pokemon. So we can see that this Sylveon's kind of leaning towards that tank and heal strategy, and with the Ribbon Badge, gives up one fewer prize. So you have to take into consideration that Sylveon VMAX is essentially a 310 hit point Pokemon that only gives up two prizes, since I imagine that any Sylveon VMAX deck is going to be playing plenty of Ribbon Badge cards. And then Max Harmony for three colorless energy does 70 damage plus 30 more damage for each type of Pokemon on your bench. Now there are 11 different types of Pokemon in the Pokemon TCG right now, but you are limited by the amount of Pokemon you can have on your bench. So if you have five different types of Pokemon on your bench, then Max Harmony is going to be doing 220 damage, which is pretty respectable for three colorless energy, but there are ways to get even more types of Pokemon onto your bench in standard formats. There is Kecleon from Chilling Rain that has the Chroma Shift ability, which makes the Kecleon each different type of basic energy that is attached to it. So Kecleon can theoretically be a bunch of different types all at once, but you do have to get every different type of basic energy that you want onto the Kecleon, which is a little bit complicated. There's also a Blaziken that is both fighting and fire type. I think that, you know, Sylveon could have potential if they print some dual type basic Pokemon, right? Because imagine if you have two dual type basic Pokemon on your bench, then all of a sudden you could have seven different types of basic Pokemon on your bench and do base 280 damage with Max Harmony. And it just ramps from there for each different type of Pokemon on your bench. So I think that Sylveon VMAX, certainly a Pokemon to look out for and has that awesome ribbon badge as well, which makes it only give up two prizes. So something worth considering. I love this item card, Vigor Shake. When you use this card, your turn ends. That is unfortunate, but thankfully it has a very powerful upside. It allows you to search your deck for a card that evolves from one of your Pokemon and put it onto that Pokemon, then shuffle your deck. And you can use this card during your first turn or on a turn that that Pokemon was put into play. What I love about Vigor Shake is that 
it allows you to set up your board and it can't be marnied away, right? If you have the Vigor Shake, you could just use it. Even if it's the first turn of the game going first, it's great in that respect because it allows you to just set up your board without the fear of getting the card marnied or shuffled away. So I think that this card is very cool. It definitely has some implications for expanded format. Trevenant from X and Y has an item locking ability that you could unlock on the first turn of the game going first with Vigor Shake. So I wonder if there will be any updates to the expanded ban list with the release of this card as Pokemon doesn't really like it when you can item lock on the first turn of the game going first as it really decreases the amount of uh, playing that your opponent gets to do. But I think that this card is good. It won't be in every setup deck, but I think that there could certainly be some decks that utilize Vigor Shake. You're not really going to want to use it late in the game. That's the problem with this card. It's really good on the first turn of the game going first. You could get a turn one VMAX. You could uh, you know, get a turn one uh, Vaporeon VMAX, which is really cool. I like that. But later in the game, you're really going to want to make sure you're keeping pace with your opponent and attacking just about every turn. So we'll see how much use Vigor Shake really gets because it's really only good during the setup phase of any game. Aroma Lady allows you to draw two cards, then remove all special conditions from your active Pokemon, which seems neat, but if you compare it to a card like Bird Keeper, Bird Keeper draws you three cards and removes all special conditions from your active Pokemon because it switches it to the bench. And when you switch your active Pokemon to the bench, it gets healed of all status conditions. So I think the Bird Keeper is just better than Aroma Lady. I don't really expect this card to see any play. Fashion Mall is a new stadium card that reads once during each player's turn, that player may return a Pokemon tool attached to one of their Pokemon back into their hand, which is neat. If you happen to place your Pokemon tool in the wrong spot, I'm not really a fan of cards like this. Just put the Pokemon tool where you want to put the Pokemon tool. I get it. You could play down the Pokemon tool and then use Professor's Research, and then you draw into the Pokemon that you actually wanted the tool on. So you could use Fashion Mall to pick up the tool. I think it's a little too situational, and I don't really ever see myself using this card. This Entei's insane. Single Strike Entei, okay. It's got 120 HP, and just just look at him. Look at that. Look at that claw. Look at those fangs. Look at that ferocious pose. I'm not exactly sure how the Entei is balancing like this, but the Entei is coming for you. You better watch out. It's got the attack Fangs of Rage for a fire and a colorless energy. Does 10 damage plus 10 more damage for each damage counter on all of your benched single strike Pokemon. That's wild. I mean, single strike Pokemon can have like over 300 hit points. So they could have tons of damage on them. Like an imagine, uh, imagine that you have a single strike Pokemon on your bench with 300 damage on it, or, you know, 200 damage on it. Then that means the Fangs of Rage would do, uh, you know, that much damage plus 10 more, which I think is pretty sweet. And Entei is a single strike Pokemon. I'm not saying that I've got the broken deck for Entei, but that attack is worth making a mental note of. You can have, you know, a ton of damage on your bench, making it so that Fangs of Rage could do, you know, 500 damage, 600 damage, if you had accumulated enough damage on your bench. I'm not saying that this is going to be, you know, a great deck, but it's an interesting attack nonetheless. Florigis is a really useful rapid strike Pokemon. Let's take a minute to talk about the fact that stage two Pokemon, okay, have a criminally low amount of HP. This, nothing upsets me more than seeing a stage two Pokemon. You realize you have to evolve twice to get this thing into play, right? Two times. That's at least a couple of turns. Or you have to find a rare candy and a stage two in the same hand. And 130 HP, I'm just saying. 
all stage two Pokemon should have well over 200 hit points. In my mind, if I got to evolve a Pokemon twice, it should be able to survive a Brave Blade. I'm just saying, I don't care if Zacian is legendary or whatnot. If I've got to find a rare candy and my stage two Pokemon in the same hand, okay, they should all be able to survive a Brave Blade, period, okay? All stage two Pokemon should have 240 hit points minimum. I'm not kidding. This is not a bit. I'm I'm serious, okay? It's, it This would make the game way better. Yeah, all stage two Pokemon. I, this thing needs at least 100 more hit points, okay? Basic Pokemon have 130 hit points. Basic Pokemon, like lots of them. You guys realize Chansey in base set, the very first set ever printed in the history of the Pokemon TCG had 120 hit points, but this Florigist can only muster up 130 hit points even though we have Pokemon with 340 base HP. Anyways, Florigist is a Rapid Strike Pokemon with a pretty neat ability, Rapid Connection. As many times as you like during your turn, you may move an energy from one of your Pokemon to another one of your Rapid Strike Pokemon. So it essentially allows you to turn your Rapid Strike deck into a toolbox deck and you can uh, sling your Rapid Strike energy all around the board. I think that this is pretty neat. Could combo with Cheryl, allowing you to move your energy off of Rapid Strike Pokemon VMAX, play Cheryl, heal the Pokemon, then... Uh, sling that energy right on back. So a very useful ability on a Pokemon with a criminally low amount of HP. Melodic is a rapid strike Pokemon with an ability do protection. You prevent all effects done to you or your hand by supporter cards your opponent plays from their hand. You should have just printed that Marnie does not affect your hand, because that's basically the only thing that this Melodic is doing, but it does have implications going forward and could be useful for control-type decks as control decks really hate having their hand uh, disrupted, right? And Reset Stamp is getting rotated out of standard format, so Marnie will be one of the only ways to disrupt the opponent's hand, and Melodic preventing uh, a card like Marnie could be a big deal for slower, grindier, control-type decks. I don't think that aggressive decks will bother to play Melodic as much as getting your beautiful hand Marnied away is upsetting. I think that uh, most aggressive decks are just better off playing a more aggressive draw engine so that they can draw out of Marnie rather than having to set up Melodic in order to stop a Marnie. Because wouldn't it be ironic if you were trying to set up Melodic, but then your opponent Marnied those cards out of your hand? So I think that Melodic probably goes better in a deck that doesn't ever want to have its hand disrupted like this Smeargle, right? Smeargle has got an attack for two colorless energy. Live painting does 30 damage. Plus, you can reveal any number of basic energy from your hand. This attack does 30 more damage for each basic energy type you revealed in this way. And you don't have to shuffle the energy back into your deck. You don't have to discard the energy or anything like that. You just want to amass the energy in your hand so that you can use live painting for massive amounts of damage turn after turn. And there's even a new Eldegoss from Evolving Skies with the ability Cotton Carrier, which reads once during your turn, you may search your deck for up to two basic energy cards and put them into your hand. So the dream is to have Smeargle Eldegoss and Melodic set up. And once you set all of that up, then you could just search your deck for basic energy every turn and swing away with Smeargle's live painting attack and your opponent can never Marnie your hand. The absolute dream. Dream Ball is a trap. And let me tell you why. Dream Ball is an item card that says you can only play this card when you draw it as a prize card before putting it into your hand. You get to search your deck for a Pokemon and put it onto your bench. What if I told you that there's this cool new item card that can search out any Pokemon you want, but you have to draw it 
as a prize card just doesn't seem worth it. I would not, under any circumstances, play this card. Treasure Energy is a special energy that reads, while attached to a Pokemon, this card provides one colorless energy, but when you take this card as a face down prize card, before putting it into your hand, you may attach it to one of your Pokemon instead. This card is less bad than this card because Treasure Energy, at the very least, is just a colorless energy. So if you're playing a deck that just requires colorless energy, then Treasure Energy could just slide into it because it's not really hurting you if you don't prize it, right? Dream Ball is actually worthless if it's not in your prizes, which is why it's so, so bad. But Treasure Energy is still an energy even when it's not prized. And then you get the added bonus, right, of attaching it to a Pokemon when you draw it from your prizes. Now, you could put Treasure Energy into your prizes with Peonia. That is way too much of a wombo combo. I don't think that that is ever going to be worth it. I think that Treasure Energy just simply could be uh, played in a colorless type deck like Blissey V. Why not? Raichu's a pretty cool Pokemon, usually. It's got some nice attacks. This one has got big sparks for one lightning energy. This attack does 50 damage to each Pokemon V and Pokemon GX in play, both yours and your opponents. I think that big sparks probably just doesn't do enough top end damage. Uh, it does 50 damage to each Pokemon V. Could soften them up for Thunderbolt later, which does require that you discard all energy cards from this Pokemon does 180 damage, but uh, 50 damage at a time. I mean, Pokemon VMAX have 340, 320 HP. That means you're going to have to use Big Sparks like six times. By the time you use Big Sparks six times, your opponent probably will have taken all six prize cards. I love Swampert. Swampert is a very cool water type Pokemon and usually has some pretty nice abilities this swampert is no exception it's got the ability mud maker once during your turn you may attach one water or fighting energy from your hand to one of your pokemon in play nice little energy acceleration ability uh which could help juice up your water or fighting type pokemon so definitely like that and then earthquake for a water and two colorless does 180 damage and 20 damage to each of your benched pokemon kind of reminds me of the original Swampert, the very first Swampert ever printed in 2003 with its water call ability, which allowed you to accelerate water energy from your hand to your active Pokemon. This Swampert has 40 more hit points and now can accelerate fighting energy as well. And the coolest part about this Swampert is that you get to play, wow, Marshtop, look how cute, and Mudkip, it's absolutely adorable, and, you know, Sandy Gas just crying its eye out, eyes out there in the background. This Zoroark has a pretty gnarly ability. Shapeshifting Illusion reads, once during your turn, you may choose a Stage 1 Pokemon from your discard pile, excluding Zoroark, then discard this Pokemon and all cards attached to it, and put the Pokemon you chose in its place. Now... This does seem like a pretty neat ability. It allows for you to build a toolbox style deck where maybe you just have like a 4-4 Zorark and then a bunch of different stage one Pokemon that then you can shapeshift the Zorark into. My problem with this card is that instead of making a stage one deck more consistent, I feel like it makes a stage one deck less consistent. You gotta play these Zoraks, then you have to get the stage one Pokemon you want to play into the discard pile. And really, this card just makes me miss Ditto Prism Star, which was probably one of the best Pokemon cards ever printed for Evolution decks. Pokemon, please bring back Ditto Prism Star. This Sandy Ghast looks like the saddest Pokemon in the world. Just straight up down bad, having a horrible time. But it evolves into a very epic Palo Sand with the attack dust squeeze if your opponent's active pokemon is a basic pokemon it is now knocked out automatic ko very cool very expensive attack though you need to get three psychic energy and a colorless energy all onto this 140 hit point pokemon which is a lot to ask 
even though this Palosan can one-hit KO a Zashi and V, Zashi and V can just Brave Blade it into Smithereens, which is very sad. Which brings me back to my other point, that all of these Pokemon should just have, like, well over 200 hit points. I'm just saying, Brave Blade is just, like, way too strong. Anyways... That about does it for our Evolving Skies set review. Thank you so much for watching the video. I'm incredibly hyped for this set. I think it's going to be a lot of fun. I think it's really going to shake up the Pokemon trading card game. I did this set review live on Twitch. So if you liked the video, make sure to check out the Twitch channel, twitch.tv slash tricky gym, where I stream live Pokemon trading card game content every single weekday. We've got a great community over there and we'd love you to be a part of it. Make sure to like the video, sub to the channel, ring that bell, and uh, yeah. Check out FullGripGames.com as well for all the best Pokemon trading card game singles and sealed product. Supporting the shop at Full Grip Games directly supports the content I create here on Tricky Gym. Y'all have a great day. Peace.